Hey, what is up guys? It's me, Absolute Habibi, and today we're doing a tier list on single player experiences, the best single player experiences in EU4 nations. So as you can see here, we have many nations, some of them even one province miners like Kiss and Kaifa, um, and we are going to rate the single player experience uh, for these nations and what that means is we're going to weigh the fun uh, funness that you can get out of playing these nations the missions the ideas and overall um, if you always have something to do and I, by that I don't mean like world conquest because you could always try to do world conquest with any of these and for the most part with most of these picks for the majority of the game you could be doing that world conquest but that's not what I mean I mean for the casual player what uh which of these are the most fun to play for just a single casual experience all right so um let's start right off the bat we have austria and i'm gonna put this right on top on the bat uh, from the bat and i'm gonna put ming all the way in the bottom so this is gonna be basically our benchmark for nations in eu4 austria they have sick missions, they have sick events, they have sick ideas, and um, their mission tree is the biggest mission tree in the game. So you don't even have to tag switch. You can spend most of the game just playing as Austria, doing going through the mission tree and having a pretty good time. And you know, you don't necessarily have to blob. You can do a lot of PUs, you can be spreading your dynasty, and basically it leaves out for a very fun experience. Ming, on the other hand, is annoying as hell. You have so many problems to deal with, you have to deal with mandate you're gonna have rebel spawning you have no nomadic uh, issues and you have this tribute shield around you and it kind of makes you awkward like what the hell do i do next so i'm gonna put that all the way in the bottom next is aragon and i'm gonna put this in a tier and actually if this was a multiplayer one i'd actually put it in s tier because aragon aragon in my opinion is actually better than castile because um you uh can do your aragon missions um, and then when you form Spain diplomatically, because if you are, if there's no player on Castile, you will get the Iberian wedding as Aragon. Um, and then you get entire Spanish mission tree. So you technically have like two mission trees since the Spanish mission tree is actually an extension of the Castilian mission tree for the most part. But, uh, because of that, I think, um, I'm going to put Aragon in the A tier. Uh, Byzantine, uh, this is actually another S tier experience. And now that there's multiple ways uh, to beat the Ottomans. There isn't only one way that requires RNG. There's two ways that I can think on the top of my head. I actually have a video, you can see that in the top right, where you can actually beat the Ottomans with no allies, so solo, uh, abusing mercenaries. And um, not only that, you have a mission tree that's pretty fun, and you have uh, achievements that you can complete that are actually not that hard to do once you complete the first part. Um, and for that reason, uh, I'm going to put it into S tier. Bohemia, I'm going to put this in A tier. I know I have a video saying Bohemia is op overpowered, but that was over exaggeration. Bohemia, the reason there's two reasons why it doesn't get put into the S tier. The first reason is their ideas are terrible. So you're going to be doing some kind of tag switch, culture shift, tag switch, which if you're a new player, uh, is kind of daunting. Second reason why they're A tier uh, is that they have they don't naturally get a lot of trade money. Um, so as you guys know, trade money is the dominant way to get money in this game. And if you want to have a very extravagant, um, campaign, you need a lot of money. You need a lot of Ducats and Bohemia just doesn't have a natural trade node to even expand to Lubeck is far away. Venice is far away and you won't be ramping up your trade income until like the 18th century or late 17th century. So I put them in a tier. Granada, I'm actually going to put them in B tier. They are fun. They have some achievements associated with them. But you start with a crappy leader. You start with a succession problem. And no one wants to ally you. So this usually leads to restarting a bunch. You can't just open up Granada and have like a campaign right off the bat. So for that reason, I put them in B tier. Armenia, I'm putting them in C tier. I don't like their ideas, but there is a role play aspect to them, especially if you're Armenian. There is a role play aspect to them that could be pretty fun, and conquering the Ottoman Empire as Armenia um, could be something that you can do with these guys and feel pretty good about. Albania is going to put in an A tier, and the reason for that is you start with one of the best starting leaders in the game, you start with one of the best starting generals in the game. You can get allies if you're playing on normal difficulty. Getting allies just requires increasing opinion. You can beat the Ottomans even without allies, the same way you would uh, with the Byzantine. Um, 
and you have some missions. You don't have a lot of missions, but you, you have some missions and you also have a fun achievement associated uh, that will probably take you the entire campaign, which is Albania or Iberia. And you can even turn that into a Mare Nor Nordstrom run, Albania into a Mare Nordstrom run, which would be pretty fun and interesting. Next is Castile. I'm going to put them in a B tier. They um, haven't really gotten much changes in recent patches. Um, their play style is pretty linear. Um, there isn't really much you can do. And not only that, you start out with some problems in the early game that could be really uh, annoying if you're a new player. Plus, um, I find that Aragon is usually a better choice than Castile. Um, not only for just being better overall, um, I think that it's just also more fun experience right off the bat. I know people will disagree with me, but uh, yeah, especially in the new patch where Aragon usually releases Naples, um, Castile, you, me, that means as Castile, you're going to lose Naples because when you get the Pew of Aragon, you're going to lose Naples. Um, and for that reason, I'm putting them in B tier. Brandenburg, I'm putting them in an A tier. And actually, I'm just going to do Prussia right off the bat. I'm going to put Prussia off up in S tier, okay? And these two are one and the same, I feel like, because 99% of the time, if you pick Brandenburg, you're going to be playing Brush, uh, forming Prussia. And the reason why I put Brandenburg in A tier as standalone is because if you are doing a standalone campaign as Brandenburg, you have less missions, I believe. Your ideas aren't as good. And um, I believe that you need to be formed Prussia to get unique events. So uh, for that reason, we put them like that. Burgundy, I'm going to put this in an S tier of fun. Okay. And the main reason for that is because of the Emperor patch. There is a mission, a very awesome mission tree. Firstly, in that mission tree, you have an event that asks the emperor to put you into the empire. If he rejects it, which you want, actually, if he rejects it, you will get a CB to subjugate all of the electors of the HRE. And uh, all you have to do is subjugate half of them, and then you can become the emperor of the HRE as Burgundy, and then form the Thuringia, and do whatever you want. Uh, Lutheringia is an amazing nation and actually before Emperor I would have put Burgundy all the way in E tier because they're, you just form France. It's like France with extra steps how it used to be. But now they have Lutheringia it's a really fun and really cool and they also have an achievement associated with them. Uh, Polish and Lithuanian Commonwealth I'm going to put these guys in D. Um, firstly they're an N-tag which means you can't culture shift out of Commonwealth. Secondly, um, they're, they're, they're pretty good. The Wing Kassars are good. But I would put Poland in B because po with Poland, you can form other nations uh, by tag switching. But if not, you stuck with your crappy uh, mission tree. And um, yeah, there's not really much to do. You just end up blobbing and uh, you end up not being that rich because you have the same problem as Bohemia. You don't naturally have a strong trade node that can pump in a lot of Ducats. I really wish this was different, but yeah, I, I want them to update Poland. Um, uh, for that reason, I'm putting them in D. Delhi, I'm going to put these guys in C. They have a pretty ish interesting mission tree. However, their play style is kind of boring compared to some other Indian nations. Um, I also find most Muslim Indian nations to be less fun than Hindu Indian nations. And that's because of the the mechanics. I'm not saying that Hindu is better religion than Sunni necessarily. Um, it is, in my opinion, but uh, I'm not going to really go into that. Uh, but I think Hindu is a more fun religion. And just switching to Hindu um, as Delhi, I don't know why you would do that. Denmark, uh, I'm going to put this nation also in D. Their play style is pretty boring. I mean, I got to admit, their play style is very boring. I thought they would be fun, but yeah, I, I, I don't really know. Um, I guess um, if you're Danish, this could be pretty fun playthrough, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, Desmond, I think this is Desmond. It's one of the Italian miners. We'll just put them all into the same scope. Um, I'm going to put this on a B tier because you could become a pirate republic, which is pretty OP, and you can have a lot of fun with it. England, I'm going to put them in A tier. Uh, so usually now uh, it's really hard to win the War of the Roses off the, I mean, the Hundred Years War off the bat. There used to be a way where you can 99% of the time win War uh, Hundred Years War. Uh, but now that France has this huge vassal swarm, it's pretty hard. However, if you surrender Maine and then just get allies, get favors and call the war calling allies, you're in a much better position and you can get the subjugation on uh, off on France and uh, have a really good campaign off that. And uh, France, I'm going to put them 
also an A tier. They're a really strong nation, but uh, I'm actually going to bump them down to B because this is funness. They're a really strong nation. If you're playing multiplayer, this would be an S tier. Uh, but in terms of the funness of the campaign, I don't know. Big Blue Blob, not really my uh, definition of fun. Ethiopia, uh, I'm also going to put these guys in B tier. They have uh, pretty good ideas. They have a really strong religion, Coptic, um, and they also have a pretty direct path for your entire campaign, which is completing the Prester John achievement, going up north, conquering the Ottomans. Uh, Holy Roman Empire, um, I'm going to put these guys in A. Uh, their ideas, everything is S, but it's uh, it's a late game thing, so I'm going to just keep them in A. Um Oh god, I got this wrong, and someone's gonna be pissed off. This is actually um, this one right here is Andalusia, and I'm actually gonna put it up to A tier. I said it was Granada. This one right here is Granada. I'm gonna put them in B. But Andalusia is pretty fun. You can form them as many different nations, and you have really strong ideas, and you also have holy orders, uh, just like any other Iberian nation. So I'm gonna put them in A tier. Uh, Great Britain. I'm gonna put them in S tier. I think they're the most fun out of the colonizers. Not only do you have a lot of stuff to do early game before colonization, but after colonization, you have a mission tree that gives you claims literally all over the world, and basically can set you up for a really fun naval game. Um, uh, especially with the new changes to maritime and naval ideas. Hissing Kaifa, I'm actually going to put this in S tier, okay? I never completed the achievement. I'm actually going to do that as one of my campaigns soon. The achievement where you basically reform the Ayyubid Caliphate. Um, uh, but uh, the reason why they're S tier is because it's actually a pretty fun experience. Um, actually, I'm going to bump them down to A tier, uh, just because there is going to be some restarts. And uh, I'm going to reserve S tier for nations that don't necessarily have to restart a billion times. Um, wait, this is Germany. This is Holy Roman Empire. I'm going to put them in A for the same reason as uh, Holy Roman Empire, Germany and Holy Roman Empire. They're pretty much the same. They have nearly identical ideas and they have the same mission tree. Hungary... Also A tier, especially after recent patch with their ideas. I'm going to give them an A. Very good, fun nation. Have strong ideas, strong missions, and also have a play style that puts them all over. Ireland. I'm going to put this also at A. Very fun nation. Uh, decent missions. And um, yeah, you can continue from the Desmond going towards Ireland. Actually, I'm downgrading it to B just because Desmond is in there. Italy, uh, I'm going to put this in S tier. So playing as actually most of the Italian nations in the most recent patch is a lot of fun. You have a lot of things to do and many of the different Italian nations have different achievements associated with them. And you get a different flavor with each one. So Milan, uh, Naples, Genoa, um, uh, Savoy, they all play differently, which is actually really fun and impressive in my opinion. Next is Japan. I'm going to put these guys in A. They have D really fun um, events. They have Shinto religion, which is a fun thing to do. They have like six achievements associated with them. And um, you can even go colonization if you really wanted to, uh, leaving them with you with a lot of things to do. Um, you can even go for the mandate. I did that once. I don't know why you would do that. But yeah, you could do that. Juanpur. I'm going to put it in C tier as Delhi for the same reasons. Uh, Jerusalem, we're going to put this as an S tier. Jerusalem is hella fun. If you saw my most recent campaign, uh, my most recent large campaign, you would know that Jerusalem not only has this really cool, unique, um, unique, uh, government type, which basically gives you Duas Vault for free. Um, they also have a really fun and cool mission tree. Kilwa, I'm going to put these guys in a B tier. Uh, they're pretty, they're, the reason why I put them in a B tier is because there's many ways you can play Kilwa. Uh, just to name two right off the bat, you can play colonization slash trade. Kilwa, go for uh, the uh, basically the Spice Islands before anyone else, the Indonesia area before anyone else. Um, the other way play style is actually re related to Butwa, which is one of my favorite nations in the game. Uh, you can do this really cool trick to basically become Boutois, a super powerful Boutois, and go from there. Next, Congo. Uh, I'm going to also put these guys in B tier. Same, actually, I'm going to put them in C tier because they are slightly more linear than Kilwa. But um, you, can be, you can actually spawn colonialization in Africa. You do have to get feudalism first. 
Lithuania, I'm putting these guys D tier. There's not really much you can do. And also, until you form the PLC, you're stuck with the Grand Duchy, which uh, is okay, but you're a duchy for a very long time. Um, yeah, and for the same reason why Poland, uh, Lithuania, there's just nothing new about them. Malay, this nation's pretty fun. I'm going to put them in B tier. I'm pretty sure this is going to bump all the way up to S tier uh, after the new Southeast Asia patch. I don't know what nation this is. Uh, yeah, I don't know what nation this is. Manchu, I'm going to put these guys in... Yeah, I'm going to put them in S tier. Um, you can World Conquest with these guys. They're pretty fun. You can raise banners. Really awesome missions, easy to form. Definitely a campaign to check out if you have the DLCs for it. And um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Milan, I'm actually going to put these guys in S tier, okay? And the reason for that is because of their new Ambrosian Republic event. Their new Ambrosian Republic event basically means that you have like three different ways to play Milan. Um, you can play them as a military dictatorship. You can play them as a Golden Republic, Ambrosian Golden Republic. And you can play them as a monarchy. Um, so literally three different paths right off the bat to play start your campaign. Um, and for that reason, they get S tier. Moldovia, I'm going to put these guys in D tier. Uh, actually, C tier, just because the decision to behead the Sultan is pretty cool. I'm going to put Wallachia on the same th as well. Mughals, S tier. Mughals are very fun. And if you haven't World Conquest before, they're actually a really great one to do World Conquest with for your first World Conquest. They're pretty cool uh, even if you don't want to do World Conquest and you have a pretty big opening for you to go through um, uh, to start the game off. You have... You, blah, blah, blah. Mughals have a very intensive mission tree, and that is on top of whatever nation that you formed beforehand. Next, Nejd. Um, I'm going to put them in an A tier, okay? And Nejd is actually more fun playthrough than you would expect. So Nejd starts at a tribe, and that means in about 100 years from start date, as a tribe, you can become a horde. And once you become a horde, you can just go crazy and go to india you can go to china you can do world conquest and not only that your ideas are so nice for converting and if you really uh, after you get jihad uh, the jihad achievement which requires you to have 500 sunni provinces as najd you can go and do uh, you can do a culture shift and switch nations and get a new mission tree if you so wished like for example you could uh, do room i know room doesn't have a mission tree but that's just an example you can form room um, and get an Ottoman government type. Get out of your nomadic government type at some point. All, t all up to you and very open gameplay and play style. Next is Naples. I'm going to put these guys in A tier. Um, unlike Milan, they play semi-linearly. You pretty much are, as Naples, you pretty much are just waiting for your independence. And from that point, you start playing the game. Uh, but yeah, I put them in A tier because now they have missions. Now they have uh, achievements. So... I put them towards A. Navara, this is a nation I'm going to put in B tier. I've only tried the Navara start once, but I've watched uh, Budget Monk play as Navara, um, and it's a pretty looks to be a pretty fun campaign. However, you do the same thing as always, like as Navara. You are going to conquer Iberia. You're basically going to form Spain as the unlikely person to form Spain, as Navara. Uh, for that reason, I put them in B tier. Nepal is a nation I'll put in A tier. So uh, you can go as Gorka, I think, is the best candidate to form Nepal. And from there, um, your play is pretty slow because you're pretty poor. Uh, but once you reach Age of Absolutism, you get to this point where you are the powerhouse of India. And because of that, you can do so much stuff um, and you have uh, pretty strong ideas. I think the Prussia of India is an over-exaggeration. I would, I would give that to Rajputana. Not only do they have better ideas than Nepal, um, they also have... Um, they're, not only do they have better ideas than Nepal, uh, military ideas, in my opinion, they also have permanent modifiers in their mission tree. Actually, because of that, I'm bumping Nepal to B. I think this nation's overrated. Compared to a nation like Rajputana, I'm going to put Nepal in a B. The Netherlands, this is straight up S tier, dude. Netherlands, if you haven't played them before, if you're a new player, 
play as Holland, form Netherlands, play Netherlands. You have sick events, you have a sick mission tree, you have sick ideas, and uh, you have a really cool, unique government that you can play around with. Um, of course, other people can get the status versus oranges. I, it's a totally different name for other people. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but Netherlands is cool. You have events to PU, Great Britain. You, uh, very fun for multiplayer, very fun for single player. Novengrad, uh, I'm going to put these guys in C. Just because to do the achievement, you're going to have to restart a bunch of times. I know this because I tried the achievement I to see how hard it is. And in my opinion, yeah, it's a couple restarts. And not only that, most of your land that you conquer into and start with is pretty poopy. And you're just going to form Russia anyways. Oda, I'm going to put these guys in A tier. They are pretty fun. And they're also a fun Japanese miner uh, to form Japan with and keep... Uh, their ideas um, there they have uh, you'll basically if you go offensive ideas with Oda you'll essentially always have three star generals and uh, that's pretty fun to play around with in a unique experience Ottomans these guys are C tier these guys need an update uh, they're incredibly boring and if you play multiplayer lobbies you know that Ottomans are always one of the last nations to be picked, despite being one of the strongest nations. Don't get me wrong, Ottomans are strong. Ottomans probably are one of the strongest nations, top five strongest nations. But they're boring as hell, and they haven't gotten an update in like two years. So C tier for me. Persia, B tier. Uh, pretty linear. They're pretty cool, I guess. They're like the trade money focus of the area, you know, versus Mughals. Mughals are the blobbers. Persians are the money makers. More fun in multiplayer than Mughals, in my opinion, because if you form Mughals in multiplayer, usually the players that are in India will go right after you. But in terms of single player, um, uh, they're also, I don't know, their ID, their mission, I don't even know if they have missions. I haven't formed Persia in a while, but in my opinion, B tier. Next is Poland. This one I'm going to put it up into B tier. And you might be like, what the heck? Polish, Lithuania, D. Poland is B. And same thing as I said before Poland is sick. Wing Tassars are sick. Uh, Polish ideas are awesome. However, Poland, Lithuania is pretty crappy. Like the, the formable nation is pretty crappy. You have all of these disasters you have to deal with once you reach Age of Absolutism. You still have to deal with them as Poland, but there's kind of workarounds that you can do. And if you're playing multiplayer, if you, uh, you can switch to Orthodox um and then culture shift to ruthenia and then you have ruthenia and you then also dodge all of those age of absolutism problems that you would run into um but yeah i put those guys in a b tier portugal this one i'm gonna put in b tier and if you're completely new to the game i recommend portugal they are sick for colonialization and learning the game you have two very strong allies right off the bat castile and england which basically make it almost impossible for you to get invaded Castile covers you on ground and uh, Great Britain covers you by sea. Just make sure you keep good relations with both of them. Punjab. Uh, I'm going to put these guys in C. Uh, Sikh religion's cool, I guess, but uh, I don't know. The playthrough. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I'm not, I don't see the appeal to it. C for me. Uh, Shing. Um, despite Manchu being S, I'm going to put Shing in B just because um, you're basically like have the same problems as Ming. But a little bit to lesser extent. Rajputana. I'm actually going to put these guys in S. And I didn't even know about these nations until my most recent campaign. Where I did World Conquest as Provence. And I formed Rajputana at one point. They have sick ideas. They have sick missions. And give, basically give you things to do until for a very long time. And not only that. They're not an end tag. So after you're done with the mystery. Hey. Just form another Indian nation. Room, this nation, I'm going to put them in an A tier. They're Actually, I'm going to put them in B tier. They're like Ottomans, essentially, but a little bit more flavor. So, B tier. Romania, I'm going to put these guys in C tier with Wallachia and Moldovia, just because their ideas are literally the same as Wallachia and Moldovia. Russia, this is going to be an S tier. Um, Russia is incredibly fun. You have many things you can do. Uh, your start... Um, it's pretty linear. It's always usually the same. But after that point, um, you can expand into almost literally every single direction. You have a lot of stuff to do. You have a decent mission tree. It is an endgame tag. Um, however, 
Um, I still put them in S tier, not only because they're a super strong nation, but because they're also very fun, especially if you're a newer player. All you need is, I think, Kozaks and Third Rome expansion. Uh, once you have those two DLCs, um, they ha they're a pretty fun experience. Ryuku. I'm going to put these guys in A tier just because of three mountains, and that's it. Sardinia Pudma, Piedmont, another A tier. Um, again, unlike Milan, they are kind of linear. Uh, Milan is, I'd say, the most unique out of all of the Italians. But Sardinia Piedmont is like Naples. Uh, your play style and campaign is probably going to look the same most of the times that you play Sardinia Piedmont. Of course, you have to form this nation. And anyone with, uh, it used to be only Savoy and uh, Piedmont. Uh, no, Savoy and Sardinia could uh, form Sardinia P Piedmont, but that changed since Emperor. You need to have at least uh, you have to have Piedmontese or Sardinian culture, and you can form this nation. They have very nice mission uh, mission tree. One of their mission trees give admin efficiency until the end of the game, which is a nice bonus to have. And not only that, they're pretty fun. Scotland. I'm going to put these guys in B just because they're another nation that can become pirates. Uh, I think uh, I think his name is Dragoon. He did a pretty funny meme video as Scotland. Worth checking out. I don't even know who this is. Uh, I'm just going to put it here because I don't know who they are. But these two. This one looks familiar, but I can't. Is this? Wait, is this the Maldives? In that case, still, I'm going to put them here. But yeah, I don't know who these guys are. Uh, so I'm just going to put them down here. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, Polotsk, uh, this is a C tier. The, I guess you can meme and do all, if you're doing a full artillery, artillery only. Uh, they could be a good candidate with Aragon, but for that reason, they're just C. Spain, I put Spain in A tier uh, just because Aragon's A tier and Castile's in B tier. Uh, both nations would are there to form it, and I think they both... Uh, I think that Spain, it just like Great Britain, has uh, basically things to do the entire campaign. So um, it's fun, not necessarily S tier though. Sweden, uh, this is another A tier, and this is surprising because you'd be like, dude, you put Denmark in D tier. Well, um, <laughs> Sweden has unique events that throughout the entire campaign, and actually don't form scandinavia with sweden this is really funny but don't form scandinavia because if you form scandinavia you stop getting swedish events and the swedish events are probably the best events in the game probably only matched with austria and uh they're worth the, i think they're the most fun scandinavian nation to play so for that reason i put them in a tier tungu i put them in b tier i did an achievement with them but despite being the strongest one province minor in the uh, near area i think that they're pretty boring, and if you're going for the achievement, you're you're most likely in the near end going to do loan abuse like I did, which is going to make your nation unplayable after you complete the achievement, meaning there's no campaign after completing the achievement. For that reason, I put them in B tier. Teutonic Order, I'm going to put these guys in C tier. Uh, actually, I'm going to put them in D tier. Um, I don't think these guys are fun. Uh, I don't know why you would pick them. Actually, I'm going to put them down to E tier. I don't know why I'd pick them. Maybe for some lul. I am a Teutonic Knight lul. But uh, despite that, I'm just going to put them E tier. Oh, Knights. I'm going to actually put these guys in A tier. Ever since last patch, they're actually pretty fun. You can do some really cool stuff with them. You start with the Jerusalem mission tree, which is the Crusader State uh, mission tree. Um, and they're, uh, they could be a fun candidate to form Jerusalem with. I don't know where Provence is, but if Provence was here, I'd put it S tier. I guess I didn't add it in this tier list. Sag. Mamluks. I'm going to put these guys in B tier. They're actually pretty fun, and they're, I find them more fun than Ottomans, but besides that, not that much more fun. Um, you can basically make a diplomatic vassal swarm, go diplo ideas first, and basically get all of the Arab miners as your vassals. Um, and uh, you can defeat the Ottomans right off the bat, like... The, the goal is to attack them before tech 5. Um, but if you do that, if you take loans, get uh, t become a uh, defender of the faith, um, get attack them immediately uh, before tech 5, you actually have a good chance of taking down the Ottomans. And from there, you can culture shift and become room. For that reason, I put them in B tier. Papal States, this is an S tier experience. Uh, there's so much stuff you can do with them. Multiplayer, it's a really fun role play experience. You should at least try that once. 
Um, and uh, yeah, out of the Italians, they uh, you have so much stuff to do. Uh, so Milan, even though it's a unique experience, Papal State is unique experience in the entire game. They're the only country that can get their unique government type. Uh, you are most likely to become the Pope, you know, because you are the Papal States. And you get all the modifiers from becoming the Pope. And since Catholic religion got buffs, this is actually pretty good. And not only that, they fixed the thing where if you formed Kingdom uh, kingdom of God, it used to be uh, right at the Emperor Patch. If you form Kingdom of God, it dissolves... Um, it dissolves uh, the papal state interactions, the papal interactions for some reason. They fix that. So going kingdom of God is now still is still viable. And not only that, you have achievement for doing so. Timurids. Uh, I'm going to put these guys up in A tier. Another nation that's really fun. And you can form Mughals and become an S tier. Um, and uh, this, the reason why they're not S tier with Mughals is because their start can be pretty annoying. Especially if you're a new player. Their start can be pretty annoying, especially if you have bar bad RNG and your starting leader just dies right off the bat. <laughs> that happens. I, I'm sorry, man. I'm just so sorry. Tuscany. I'm going to put these guys in B tier just because forming them removes your republic. And yeah, that's about it. They're an Italian nation you can form. And their ideas are exactly the same as Florence ideas. So I don't know why you would form this nation. I guess there's some events associated with it. But yeah, if you have some reason, let me know in the comments. Ohm, put these guys all the way up here. But really, it's actually all the way here. I know the meme guys. I know it's. I even meme to here. It says Ohm, but in reality, they they have crappy missions. You're in a crappy position. Your province sucks. And um, yeah, I don't know why you'd play this nation besides despite uh, besides memeing. USA. I put these guys in D tier just because ever since Emperor, there's a lot more fun nations to form like Vermont. Um, and even before Emperor, you have Texas, which is another really fun nation to form. And not only that has some asso achievements associated with it. So I think um, Texas is better than the USA. Um, and um, I really wish there was more missions or events associated with the USA. Um, and until then, it remains D tier. Vijayanagar, uh, these guys are B tier. They're pretty fun, and if you're a new player and you want to play in India, Vijayanagar is the way to go. You start as probably the strongest position in India. You are Hindu, so you get to play around with the Hindu interactions. And uh, yeah, they're pretty good. I know I can't get all of the nations, but I tried my best. Like I said, if I had Provence, I'd also put them in this S tier. But um, looking at this tier list, I'm actually going to zoom out one so we can look at the entire tier list. But looking at this tier list, you can actually see that a lot of nations uh, are on the top part. And that's actually a good sign. There's a lot of very fun starts and a lot of fun experiences in EU4. And this tier list basically proves that. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, if you're wondering, hey, dude, why are you not streaming? Why aren't you posting EU4 and CK3 content? I am honestly a little bit burned out from map games, especially after my Provence campaign. I know if you look at the footage or the videos, it's like two, three hours of content, right? But in reality, those campaigns took me like a total of 50 hours of work to not only just play the game, but to edit and go through all the footage and cut things and put music and all that stuff. So I'm completely burnt out from them. So for that reason, for at least this week, I'm not doing any map games next week i might get back into it um also if you saw my video where i was saying i'm going to start multiplayer lobby the announcement for that is coming out tomorrow anyways that's it for this video guys i uh, hope you are doing well and uh peace see ya